remove criticisms from me. Give me humility to learn. Give my partner humility to learn. And give my family grace to learn. And I want you to say this in prayer. Father, I submit my heart to you. Don't let me become judgmental. Grant me grace to humbly see myself. Remove the log of woods in my eyes so that I can see more clearly the pecks in the eyes of my partner. Help the two of us to receive your word, your instruction, your correction, your revelation, so that it will be better for us. In any way, I have used your gift against you. In any way, I have bastardized the institution you value. Please, I am ready to repent and do it again. Help me. Help me, O oh Lord. Remas o kabala ma yendere kabo kastili kabo zondalia. Lambro masunda kabayenduria braba zonda kostili kabo. Yanda bala ma yendere kepo kostole kabo shandalia. Lama so kabayanda ria. Epos Lord. Labo so kabaya. No man is sufficient for these things. But because of the calling and the anointing. Let your word have great expression today. Help me to speak with nimbleness of understanding and humility of heart. Lord, let not the people see me as God or as perfectionist, but as someone who have received of the grace of life to distribute the word of grace and to assist in every way the Holy Spirit wants to assist us today. And cause my people also to hear well and hear good word. Let our home be rebuilt, be repaired. Let our marriages be restored. Let it bring glory to your name once again. And let the product of our marriages, O oh God, become faithful fruits that eyes can see. And will be a servo in our present world. Do something about homes through this teaching in the name of Jesus Christ. So that we will not become a bunch of foolish society, but society that is connected to the kingdom of the living God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for online on ground. Everyone shall be fully blessed today. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you please take your seat in God's presence? I'm glad to welcome us to another celebration of God's mercy, Sunday ministration. Online on ground, I am trusting in the Lord that there shall be new or fresh impartation of glory in our lives in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Today I will be speaking as published on the topic good communication in marriage. Good communication in marriage. I suppose I don't need to say just communication in marriage because every communication is not always good communication. 
People commune to fight, people commune to disagree, people commune to do a lot of things. So we will be too versed if we go on talking about communication in marriage. And we will need a lot of time to deal with that. That's why I want to streamline today's teaching on simply good communication. There are communications that are good for our marriage. And that is what essentially God is calling us unto, calling men and women. Inside the institution of marriage to the art of good communication. Every social organism has a way to communicate, even including beasts. And so, we don't have little among men. Communication foster understanding, communication settles disputes, communication brings revelation and knowledge of one another's disposition, and so many other things. The art of communication is so wide and so important that we need to understand that there are physical communication and there are signages. There is what we call cues in psychology that is communicating with signs. All of these things are necessary in the God-ordained institution called marriage. Now, let's start with this. For anyone, man or woman, to get engaged in this God-ordained institution called marriage, you will need an average understanding of communication. The Joyful Sound Choir just sang, and the, our sister that led that song said, James said, be slow to speak. Whether you are slow or you are fast, speaking is inevitable. If you are going to get engaged to either a man or woman of your choice, you will need to open your mouth, you will need to send signals, you will need to communicate. So communication starts at the very foundation of marriage. Because it's often been proven by so many people who have spoken about this very important issue. And when we hear communication, we just delve into the hole. No. The very foundation of good marriage is marked with good communication. In our culture, it's no rampart. that you see a lady asking a man and a marriage. However, though we saw in the Bible that it is God himself that brought Eve to Adam, however, the first to speak among the two of them was Adam. So maybe that's what, why we feel so comfortable that it must be man who must send cues to the woman before marriage will begin to evolve. And you see, God is so good, he has not created any man who cannot speak. Even those who are dumb, they use sign to communicate. 
signs such as winking of your eyes, dimming of your face, raising of your hands, beckoning to people. All these are communication devices that God has blessed man with that and draw the heart of your suitor to you. But what we want to base on this morning is that good communication facilitates solid foundation for every godly marriage. I'd like us to open to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 17. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 17. Hear what the Bible says. It says, cast your hearts, comfort your hearts, comfort your heart, and establish you in every good word and work. There, he's talking about the foundation of comfort and establishment lies in good word. The foundation of comfort and establishment lie in good words, not just in words, not just in every word, but in good word. From the scripture, I can see many marriages have faulty foundation because they are void of good word at their foundation. I moved close to young people and I found out that especially the educated among them, they have developed a belief that you don't approach a prospective future partner with good word of certainty and clarity. A lot of them come to say, I want you to be my friend. A lot of them come to say, you know, let's just be walking together. And that creates a bot in many foundations. That I've seen people who intend, who ought to have done the assignment, find out that this is a woman I can put up with, this is a brother I can put up with, and they come at the very beginning of their coming together with the good words. I want to marry you. I want to marry you is different from let's be friends. And I know, or maybe I should say I guess, the reason why majority of young people are using that is because number one, they are not fully convinced that they need that person, doubt, they may think, what if it doesn't work, let's give it a try if it can work, there is a slang or slogan in the sophisticated society, they call it prior marriage, but you see, if it's going to be God, you can't try marriage, or try marry. You will end up in immorality. And so we should be careful of our words, of our language, when we are trying to come together to an opposite sex. Another reason, I suppose, 
why young people say let's be friends is because some of them are shy. And then number three, some of them are young for marriage. But look at it this way. That I say I want to marry you does not mean we are going to the altar tomorrow. So that shouldn't be the reason why we should be using words that are not clearly conveying our mind. I've had issues with young people. Who would say let's be friends? I don't know the kind of friend that will chat from 12 midnight to 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. I don't think that is responsible friendship. And I can't see how someone will plant himself or herself into your heart, doing things together for a long time, and you will not be influenced. Even in English, an Englishman said, call a spade a spade, so that we know where we are going from the beginning. There is danger in it. I've seen young men who say, well, let's be friends. And they are friends. But the lady said, in as much as he has not proposed to me, I have so many other friends. And at the end of the day, why one of them is still salivating? Is still cherishing the relationship and seriously burying himself in plan for the future. The other one picks up his wedding invitation. And this one get disappointed and begin to complain. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They say he disappoints me. Who disappointed who? You didn't tell me we're going to marry. You said we should be friends. A lot of friends in school. And only after a year or a few months. Going to receive an invitation. Or invite. From your friend that she wants to marry. And then the boy is devastated. Shouldn't be disadvantaged. You shouldn't be confused. Because you never tell her or told her your mind. And essentially, people can be doing that in the world. It does not befit children of God. Because out of anger, we have seen disappointed Partners cost one another. Say you disappoint me and that marriage will not work. Whereas God told us to do everything decently and in order in the churches. I want to reiterate here that a lot of us get ourselves into trouble because we don't know how to work in the house of God. We bring causes. We bring untold delays. We bring troubled marriage because you have disappointed someone and you go ahead to marry another. Praise the name of Jesus. And so I warn young people who could listen that until you have a clear conscience about where you are going, you may not need to bury yourself in the communication of any man or any woman. And then back out when you find out that it's not going to work. Marriage in the Lord is different from marriage in the world.
no one actually can see the secret and the innermost intent of another person's heart except God reveals it. We have a lot of young people now who are cosmetically dressed that you can't say this is who they are. That have covered up their real self. That's why people fall in love in church and fall out of marriage outside church. Cosmetics. May God save us. I don't think any serious person, no matter how loving you are, that you're going to pick as your partner somebody who will eventually kill you. But you see, we see the occurrence so much now, aggravating now, and you tend to ask, what is the foundation of such union? The Yoruba people will say, a house that is built with saliva will be pulled down by ordinary dew. Whether you like it or not, when the foundation is destroyed, I don't think the righteous will do much. So good word. What's the good word? Good word conveys on you personal responsibility. To find out through prayer, through observation, through questioning, through closer walk and a lot of things and making known your mind for your intentions not coming out to pretend you know there is this evil also <laughs> you say let's be friends and we begin to chat at night and pray to some of them who are church people they pray together and all that. There's no way you'll be praying with an opposite sex that you won't bury your image in a heart. No way. There is a way through which whatever you relate with and communicate with gets into your life. Words contain spirits. So every exchange of words bring exchange of spirits. You are already swept off your feet before your eyes got open. It's like somebody is using a charm on you. Your judgment becomes subjective, biased and prejudiced instead of being objective. You may not, a lady may not have arrived at making a decision, but because you allowed that boy into your life, started donating gifts to you and all that, you will know when you fall off your feet. Because gifts blind the eyes. There are so many young people, young ladies, who are supposed to be in Christ, marry the kingdom way, but are falling into such wrong hands and only to find out that they are going with a wrong man. There was one who ran back to church and said when he was not at home, I was there in the home to sleep and I said as you look around looking under his bed I saw a calabash with oil dripping there and I gathered that this is a fetish man and I ran away. Does a kingdom child, a kingdom speechy, does she have to go through that? Do you have to be captivated by a 
fetish person. That's not the kingdom way. Praise the Lord. Except there are proper deliverance, that lady may not escape from that boy. I've treated cases like that among youths. That the very evening, the lady said no to the proposition of sex. She started urinating on her bed. Bed wetting. I've never seen that before in my life. She was around 24 at that time. The very evening she said no, she, she was not going to concede to his proposal for immorality, she started bedwetting. It was too bad that we had to conduct deliverance. So the question now is, what could have lured a daughter of Zion to such an embarrassing situation. Thank God she was able to get that and not, I mean, that didn't happen after marriage. If it had happened after marriage, there is no way. There will be divorce. There will be battering. There will be a lot of evil done. I am saying all this so that we can all know the implication of good word, which bring comfort and establishment. If we are truly children of God, why not speak words of God? Why not follow the footstep of God? Why not live the kingdom life? Why not be plain and truthful? Why do we have to walk ourselves into the life of another person when we are not really convinced who she is or who he is? But someone say, hey, pastor, we don't know everybody and we can't know everybody. Don't you think we should try? That's what I said. There is no room for trial marriage in Christ. However, there are scriptural provisions when a marriage wants to turn sad on how to deal with it. So the good word is necessary. Somebody shout, Amen. <clears throat> so it is the good word that's supposed to bring you together. So that you can have good comfort and good establishment. And now that you are together, someone has said, I agree. To your proposal, I will marry you. Then we need much more effective communication to carry the assignment through. Good communication. Having started like that, we have to continue like that. Even to the period of courtship. It is at courtship period that you share your heart and share your mind. You ask each other questions. You probe into each other's life. And let me note this. Any intimacy that will take away your sense from inquiry. Avoid it. Because one of the reasons for courtship is for inquiry. Research. 
caring, through communication. Don't find yourself becoming falling head over heels with someone whose life you have not taken time to observe and to research into. Young people, because of frivolities, fail to inquire. They fail to do researches. Many of them are too consumed with sexuality or sensual pleasure. The time they ought to use to verify finding out issues, they are carried away. That's the time where worldly young people begin to kiss and romance and do a lot of things. A lot of kingdom folks, they don't prepare for marriage. They just look at themselves like, I need a woman or I need a man. What tells you you need a man? There must be room for preparation. There are certain things that will be happening to you that will indicate to you that your time is up. No matter how old you are, if your attitude is not more than the behavior of a girl, it is not yet your time. Anybody that must know that it is time to marry must become a woman. And the boy must become a man. You can go ahead and interpret that the way you like. For marriage is not for boys and girls. It is between a man and a woman. So to me, you are not qualified if you are not ready to assume the role of a man and she's not ready to assume the role of a woman. Young girl that woke up from her bed and does not make the bed and rush out. A young girl that cannot cook normal food. A young girl that don't know the best way to dispose the things she's using for menstruation. A young girl that scatter a used pant all over. Even if people say it's time for you to marry, you should tell yourself it's not yet time. The same thing, a boy. Your mother is feeding you. You are collecting money from your father. You don't have psychological maturity. You are just too emotional. You are not rational in your thinking. You are selfish. You can't distribute what you have at hand with another person. You think only about yourself. Oh, maybe you should think. Maybe you need a cleaner, another wife, who will clean you up because your jeans you wear for six days so dirty. Nobody to wash it for you. It's better for you to hire a cleaner than to go for a woman to marry. What I'm trying to say is this. You must be a woman before you marry. And you must be a man before you marry. Whoever is telling you something else is deceiving you. collect a salary 
you bring 1,000 in offering every loaf and say, my father in the Lord, this is your seed, and you want to marry. Is that the way you'll be giving 1,000 to your wife? I'm not ready to marry. Don't disturb yourself. Grow up and mature. A man that we marry must have assumed the attitude of sharing. Because sometimes, based on the distribution that you agree to make, there are men who will give 80% of what they have every month. Put it on the table. And still take care of so many other things without involving the woman. How do you want to cope? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are we together? So now, let's assume you have done everything you need to do and it has culminated the marriage. One important thing you must not neglect. Don't leave your spouse to the dialogue with the devil. Consume his or our time with good words. Engage your spouse with good words, even after marriage. Now I'm going to show you something in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. There are going to be smart men and women that your spouse are relating with daily. Subtle, clever, smart, crafty. There are devils incarnate in our environment. Always. And he said unto the woman. And he said unto the woman. Somebody should ask me. Where was the man? Now if you consider chapter 2. When God wanted to talk. He talked with both of them. But when Satan wants to talk to your marriage, he gets you one after the other. He spoke to the woman. Who is speaking to your spouse? Sister, who do you engage in communication? Brother, who is it that is always communicating with you beside your spouse? Now look at what he says. Yeah, and God said, he started with a question. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden... And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. That's fantastic. She had well. Somebody says she had well. That's why Jesus said, Watch how you hear. Some people don't hear well. They will use off instead of for. They use when 
instead of if. How you hear is more important than the content of what anybody said. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Don't even touch it. Otherwise, there is a penalty, death. So she got God right. And one of the reasons that made her to be correct and excellent in what God said was because both of them were addressed at the same time. So if one missed, one is like, there is a CD recording the conversation. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof. Now, that's the devil talking now. Then your eyes shall be open. <laughs> Does it mean God wouldn't have told them this? Do you need to hear the explanation from your enemy? Of what God had told you? Do you need to go to fake prophet for interpretation of the dream you had? Do you need to go siphoning and enlisting all manner of palm reader concerning the marriage you have just consummated? Do you need anybody to begin to dream for you in a marriage that is holy and clean? Here we are. Satan is how to spoil and plant something dangerous into that marriage. Through communication. Through what? Through what? Through communication. That's why I say good communication. For God know that in the day you eat the other day, your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's. Knowing good and evil. That's the end. He has finished everything. What is the next verse? Verse number six. Can we read together? The question is this. All these five points she listed, where did she get it from? She saw that it's desired, desirable to the eyes. Was she blind before? <laughs> Bad communication opened the eyes of your flesh. Bad communication. Open the eyes of your flesh. Doesn't open your inner eyes. God addressed the inner eyes. Now the enemy is addressing the eyes of the flesh. And she began to see vision immediately. Why in courtship? From years back. I can use the word, we were both crazy for each other under Christ until one day during our courtship. And my fiancé came and instead for us to start the normal devotion, talking and all that, he frowned. I said, there was going on. And she said, if it, is, if, it, if it is those ladies you want to marry, why don't you go with them? Don't waste my time and all that. I was shocked. And I said, where do you hear that? We spoke a late last night. Where is this coming from this morning? They say, you better tell me 
so that you don't waste my time and all that. Since you know they are the ones you want to go with. I said, who are they? I was wondering, who are they? You have them. You know them. They also know you. Uh, I began to blast tongues. Begin to pray in tongues. You know, that may not be visible or audible to her. Because there is a way men do their thing inside me. Bind the devil that is involved right now and all that. Because when there is bad communication, the devil is always at the back of it. So if, if you just go arguing, you are losing the battle. Number one, the bag of your strength will be leaking through argument. At the same time, you must not be silent altogether. Because silence may not have clear interpretation in every situation. Silence may look like pride in some situations. Silence may look like, oh, you are leaving me full to talk. At the end of the day, I was able to get to the root of the matter. And I found out that there was a lady in our church, older than her, who has been behaving like a big sister to her. They are not related. She just developed interest in her. The devil developed interest. You know, I believe it's part of the scam of the devil for me. But she just got closer to her. I don't know it's because of me. It's a very crazy lady in church. Older. And let me send this note of warning. There are younger ladies in church. You will never come to the wife of your pastor. You will just migrate to any woman you see in church. I want a bag by One question to your key Sarah ye recobe answer. Walo ma pe agbagba nu jo elomi ti mi se elomi marriage ti daru elomi o gbo mo nkan to nse elomi iberu lo ma plan sinu aye and those are the people you will be working after and sharing your life with your new life that's error somebody say error And what did this lady, what did she tell her? She was the one who brought bad information, bad communication to her. That she was hoping that she was not just laboring in vain for me to, you know, make up my mind at the end of the day and then reject her. That there are so many sisters that I'm involved with that she doesn't know and things like that. And no matter how spiritual you are, that is the reason why you have to monitor those who speak to you. In the matter of destiny, the man that you are listening to every Sunday, we take a great percentage of your destiny. In marriage, the other person you are listening to, we take a great percentage of the comfort and the pleasure of your marriage. Whether you like it or not, that is a law. Because words are spirits. That's why I don't believe that it's correct for you 
to still have personal friends after you are married. Yeah, we, were, we, were, we, were, we were classmates. And so you are so close. And once you start discussion like this, you and that boy, your husband will keep quiet. That marriage cannot last. Every such intimate relationship must be transferred to become family friendship. If your marriage is going to be safe, While you were in school, there is a lady that you are so close. So close that people thought you are going to marry each other. Eventually, you didn't marry. But now that you are married, she's still calling you. And you are picking her call. And every time you pick her call, your husband will have to pack aside for you to discuss. That's a satanic communication. It will break your marriage. If you can't transform that relationship to become family friendship, then cancel the friendship. When we got married, I remember some guys just came around our house. She has told me so much about her past. We have exchanged our past. And uh, through imagination, I know the brother that was planning to marry her. You know? The brother discipled her a little. And then after a few weeks of discipleship, the next thing is marriage. Huh? Those of you who have opportunity, God says you should follow a sister up. He doesn't say you should marry her. Youth coordinator. It's not necessary you marry from among them. That you preach to somebody does not mean that must be your wife. And so when it was time, he was packed aside, but he didn't give up. So one long vacation like that, I just noticed two boys around our house. As at the time, my wife would go to work. That's around 6.30 a.m., 7. They would be parading our community. And because she was establishing good word, she was the first to tell me that so-so-so person is around here. That I met her last night while she was coming from her place of work. And that he has come to spend holiday with his brother around it. I know it is more than that. Oh my, she won't be alarming. But he love. At first, don't value fair, at least. That is where immorality starts from. So what did God help her to do? Expose that relationship to me. So the boys left. And it was at the time GSM just evolved in Nigeria. And two days later, started phoning. So anytime I wasn't there, she won't pick his call. When the Bible says this is serpents, it's not God. Why does Eve have to listen to serpents in the absence of her husband? That's foolishness. You can't be as smart as somebody who wants to have you. The very security of that Eve was Adam. So she has no right to entertain somebody whom they have known to be an enemy of God alone. I remember a sister just brought her husband and introduced him 
And I said, how are you? And all that. They just married less than one year. And where, the house where they are living, the landlord will immediately he sees the husband go out, call the lady. They, I begin to ask her some questions. And after some time, one thing led to the other. Bought Richard card for her. Bought and all that. And I said, did you ask him what does he want you to do with you? Did anybody tell him that your husband cannot provide a Richard card? Bad communication. This man will not speak to you when the husband is there. It is after the husband has left. If you are not foolish and you are not looking for something else, you should detect foul play. Bad communication. There are ladies that will never speak to your husband when you are there with him. It is when you are gone. And it's not pastor. We pastor, we are the one that is receiving everybody. For you, when your husband is absent, that's when you come in. Suspect. Be on guard. Otherwise, you're going to evolve in something. So she suspended the call. She didn't pick the call until she got home. And he's been calling since morning. When she got home, she narrated how many missed calls and all that. And while we are talking, he called again. My wife said, here is he calling again. I said, put it in speaker. He said, good evening. I've been calling you. Since he wants to use the former disciple strategy. Just to ask after your spiritual well-being. Okay. I said, say thank you. Say thank you very much, sir. And then he kept quiet for some time. You, you thought the line has broken. That is silence. And it's part of communication. At that time, she is working on her head. That what can, what can this man, I mean, what can this lady be thinking at this time? Because he kept quiet. How can you call and keep quiet? Hallelujah. And then he said, are you still there? He said, yes, I'm just there. Hmm. I'm just thinking. And I said, I call his name. That's not the real name. So that you go, don't go and tell him. And I call his name. I said, Tokwe, how are you? God bless you. Your friend is married now. Do you know? I said, if you don't have anything serious to discuss, don't call her again. Thank you. God bless you. I love you. That was the end. You say good word. That was... That was possible because of her cooperation and because of her openness. In many marriages, ladies are not as cooperative. Some of them are suffering from inferiority complex that they want to make the head of the boy hot. That if he understand that there are other men that are chasing them, he will treat them better. Oh, he are tosi polygamous. Those who marry three, four wives, many of them, the major reason for doing that, apart from immorality, is to correct the sense of the first wife. Hello, teach Beragaju, but in Bafemetali. Is that also? Is that also? Men, is that also? And they had theory 
to cut their lives into three. Praise the name of Jesus. How many of you are getting blessed? So that point is, don't open yourself to wrong communication that we attack the foundation of your marriage, either directly or indirectly. There is no way to show off to your spouse by having secret communication with a stranger. Don't let the enemy keep your spouse busy with bad words. From that day, that big sister in church, I told her, we have to break up. If we are going to marry, we have to break up from that lady. Because it took me so much time to get my fiancé back to me. And know if that woman will follow us into marriage, what is supposed to be sweet will be sad. Have you identified the carrier of bad communication in your marriage? You are complaining every day. Who is that stranger? That is speaking to your spouse. Who is it that had soft spots? That your spouse has spot, soft spot for. To be listening to. Whose conversation does he enjoy? Apart from you. Check. Don't be oblivious of it. And I'm not saying you should go and lock a shirt or a shirt. Women, you only need to be wise. I use communication to defeat wrong communication. You can also do that. If you marry according to kingdom rule, your spouse will not fight you for getting involved. In communication with stranger. But if she begins to fight you, then something is already against you. And I think such thing come when you are too negligent. But you know, by Jodori Koko ni wa toshe she wakbe kon wajo. And then you look like a foolish person. No. Praise the name of Jesus. Are we still together? Averagely, science has revealed that in every 6.6 minutes, an average man speaks 1,000 words. Now, I want you to size yourself up and your communication with your spouse. How many of that 1,006 minutes that is between you and your spouse? Or get director? Oh, there. Out of 1,000. Some of you think you are using it to pose so that somebody can know that you are hardworking. You are doing yourself. When you create too much space for your spouse and she's, he or she is longing to hear your voice and you deny him because of anything, eh, eh, please don't worry, I'll call you back, call you back, back. And he tries again. 20 minutes later, I call you back, call you back, back. 
And when you ought to call her back, you are forgotten. And until you get home in the evening, you are creating space for the serpent to engage her. Every empty line of communication. Huh? In the book of Job, when God asked Satan, where are you coming from? What did he say? From toe and fro, up and down. Hmm? Looking for vacant ear. Who will hear him? Don't let your spouse be the vacant ear that will listen to him. He has something bad to say that will destroy your marriage. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. My prayer is that the devil will not destroy your own marriage. And you also, through negligence and unholy emptiness and separation, will not destroy your own marriage. Marriage is for companionship. You keep each other busy. You feel the lonely part of him or her. It's not just there to, be, to sit down and, and be there and be creating children for you at home. That's not. Of all the purpose of marriage, that is not number one. And unfortunately, an average African man has placed that as number one. Even if they don't want to do, their mother will tell them, and so, as he's looking for a woman, he's looking for a children-making machine. So once he's able, that man says, every two, two years, he's fulfilling his purpose. That lady is a mumu. You will not be one in Jesus' name. He doesn't need a wife to get children. Hello? Tell him he doesn't need a wife to have children. You can have a concubine and have children. 700 concubine. A.K.A. It's not only a wife that can give you children. Your housemate can give you children. Your office friend can give you children. Your secretary can give you children. Hello? Companionship. Spiritual edification. Two are better than one. They have greater reward for their labor. Iron sharpness iron. When one is weak, the other one is strong. When one is cold, the other one is hot. If one falls, the other one picks him up. Companionship, fellowship before God. If true marriage is conceptualized with the relationship of the church and Jesus Christ, you find out that Jesus did not impregnate any of his disciples. If procreation is the number one, role of marriage. Jesus will have impregnated one of the disciples. But all through his ministry he didn't have a wife. So that shows that's not the number one reason. But constantly he's having fellowship with them. Talking with them. Teaching. Instructing. Correcting. Intimating. Praying with. That's number one purpose. Are we together? And if you must hear this, not only for sexual pleasure. All those ones are minor. They are the supporter. I know some men. <clears throat> but give, give yourself 20, 30 years.
Praise God. Then you will know that marriage is more than having sexual intercourse. Praise God. Let me quickly list areas of good communication expected in the kingdom life. Number one, communicate your beliefs. Let your spouse know what you believe. Communicate your career, about your career. Ask him about his job. Ask her about his her work. Be concerned. Be concerned. Be concerned. Whatever your spouse is doing should concern you. Not only the money coming out of it or the failure coming out of it, but regularly discuss your work, discuss your career, discuss things that happen at your place of work. Don't be Mr. Know-how. Discuss about your relations. Your uncle that is angry, touchy. Your sister that is blasphemous. Discuss an issue with your spouse. Because of the day she will insult him. So that he has known. Don't hide anything. So he doesn't get too embarrassed and run away. If your daddy is or your mama is a so 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 let your spouse know. Mama man to you. So that he or she will not be disappointed. The day she comes to your house and before anything, being pay wa chori obirinto kaju sile wa ni akure. Oh, I talk about Lura Woleni. Imagine if it is me, I'll just enter my room and shut the door back. So even my sibling know that I don't, I don't wait in the sitting room when such issue comes up. Right from when we were young. Anytime they start discussing personality, I'll just enter my room. And they will say, hmm, hmm, a bony one, mama. Take a man to sorrow, man. I'm a sorrow, man. That's a bad word. If you have a mother that is like that, tell your spouse, Mama man sorrow. Mama man, you're juicy because you come on. Tell him, tell her, so that they don't get embarrassed. Discuss your relations. Out of my sibling, my wife knows the person that loves me most there. The person I love most there. Uh, the, I mean, all manner. The same thing with her. So if I see any of her family member that is fumbling, I have already known. I do a lot of Amen. 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 Oni binu, ha? Oni wariri, ala anu, anu. Abani jekma wola, abani jekbeti jekma mo. Bobo, eh? Don't so ask him more. Hello. So that your spouse won't get embarrassed. 
but you are hiding it. You want to idolize them. I don't mean you should disrespect them. If your spouse loves you enough, you won't disrespect them. But we know them for who they are. So we know how to maneuver himself among them. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. Are you doing that in your marriage? Oh, you are a man who will never say anything that is wrong about your mother. My mother is Angel Gabriel. She loves me to return. Like Reverend Victory. She prays three hours every morning. Mama, I know I need here. You bore me. Well, I've been told her she's not going to take it bad. You still love her like a mother. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Discuss your relationship. Discuss your personal weakness. Let your husband know. For Roman Sweeney, I tell my wife, I said, look, and you by more also. He done. Me, I, I am always tired of speaking. If it is not preaching, it's a body for me to talk. So I don't get myself involved. That's why you see me just keep on. Boshe Wajja is share Pastor Lulu Afu Megan Kuyim. Or don't you notice? Huh? And it's you, Bale Rojo, Kidana. I keep quiet. I don't want problem. And everybody has his own weakness. That's my own weakness. I don't talk. We go to landlord association in my house. I've never been there once. Anytime my protocol came around, I sent them, go and attend that meeting. Oh, ye ko ye, ntaban swambe, she had bas pu man ku waso. And every successful, I mean, uh, uh, successive chairman, they have known me. And many of them would just stroll to my house and say, uh, Reverend Belewa, me, me, I go, when will you be around? I want to come. I know you won't come and all that. I won't come, but I respect them. When they come like that, give them wine, give them everything, make them comfortable. I respect them. I salute them for the work they are doing in the community. When my protocol is around, I send them. All of them love me by his grace, as far as I know. Hello. I don't talk. I want to go see me I was all right, Deto. I was all right, man. I was all right, I Ah, you got more people to join me. Because the message you are going to hear, it will affect you. It's always Saturday. Praise God. Amen. They, they know already. We declared it. Share your weakness. Sometimes my wife will answer for me. If it's an elder person, I can, I can send her and say, okay, go and meet with that person. You know? It is recently that I say, no, you don't meet with every man until I command you. They say, yeah, go and see them. I say, must I see everybody? It's not compulsory. Life is not, there is nothing compulsory apart from you and God. Hello? Until you get to that level, your destiny does not matter much to you. 
if he's my spiritual father and I, ah, he's compulsory. His wife is compulsory. Some honorable in-laws, good. Friends that are covenant-based, good. But just anybody, ah. Your life, you must create separations. Divide men according to their usefulness to your life and destiny. You are not for the Christmas to everybody every time. Otherwise, you won't achieve anything in life. It's not every occasion you attend. This one invites you, you go. You that one invites you, you go. That one invites you, you go. You won't do anything tangible with your life. Do you hate them? No. It's not compulsory. Sometimes it is not convenient. There are some people, no matter how priestly you are, no matter the call of God on your life, no matter the impact you are making for the work of God, they don't want to know you must attend every occasion. That is not fear people. They will kill you before your time. Because you all have the same energy and body. That woman, that man of God, does not have true flesh. Hello? Now, I'm standing here preaching. My wife will cancel. Before we came, she has done some things. She will still do. Take care of the children. Take care of all the people of God. Both home and abroad. She has answered and done counseling on radio this morning. She has done a lot of things. That she will be sweating. And you will be seeing the sweat. And all that. And somebody will still say, you must attend every occasion. You want to kill her. I myself will fight you. No matter who you are. I don't want to lose her. If anything happens, will you marry me? If you marry me, can you please me? Is she a show lesheni? That's why when you get to that level, you have to educate people. And then somebody will say, "Eh, oh, we need big beer. We like that. We got one beer. We lay in ah." You see. Along, no one be go 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 If I have sibling, let them go. In my own family, my elder sister is the one who gives everything, and we give her that honor. You come and call me to go anywhere. If I break down, do you want church member to come and be greeting me in the hospital? Research shows. That if I preach for one hour, it equates 13 hours of a banker's service in a bank. That's why you see the hair of men of God turn white so quickly. And their wives. And that's why you have helpers in the church. Dickinesses. Women coordinator and all that. Send them. That's not being bossy. No. It's distribution of an assignment. Now, we close here. Some of you women, you get to your husband, you rest throughout the day. We are closing here. Our assignment just starts. Lord, you pali. In the past three weeks now, She's been traveling off the states almost every two, two days. Who will tell you all that? And then you say somebody is doing me. It doesn't come. You will just kill yourself. And if you hate her for that, <laughs> you are doing yourself. You celebrate her still. Whoever loves her, we say, don't worry. Don't worry. We will fix it. Like my friend. 
my friend will say, don't worry, I'll fix it, don't worry. Amen. Oh, le ni pastor ati yawo pastor. To nje gboro ka akiri. Ko ma gboro awon oro to ngbo lojo ojo Sunday. To tu gbo ni Tuesday. Ashi Sam o fun eni. Ti Oluwa ni le ati ekun re. Ngbo ki la so nbe yen. Ngba to ba ka Sam to yo. Pa mo ko lo so si. Many times the anointing will fall on a Sunday. You see people fall out the anointing. Do you think it just come like that? May God spare us in Jesus' name. Amen. So understand your relationship, understand your weakness. Discuss your social lives. Discuss your health. Communicate your plan for now and for future. You must be sitting down consistently to discuss your plan. A planless family will go wrong riot. Communicate about your finances. Talk about money. Talk about ministry. Tear your fears. I'm afraid of you. Bro. Anytime they're you know, some men will be quiet until they see a lady. Once a lady says a castle, <laughs> okay, okay. The language will change, the posture will change, everything will change. If it is not carry carry, it's up to something. Tell you, I mean, your foes discuss about perceived enemy. Discuss your disagreement. Madake. Discuss about your likes and dislikes. I mean, the list is inexhaustible. Always discuss. You will hear me discuss, discuss, discuss. Marriage is about discussion, discussion, discussion. Feeding, feeding, feeding. Word, word, word. Communion, communion, communion. Communication, communication, communication. Communion, communion, communion. Contact, contact, contact. That's marriage. It, will, it can never be too much. It can never be... It can never be... It can never be too much. We have said so much today. Now, I want to give you five don'ts. Number one, silence is good, especially one, when one is angry. Because if two of you are angry at the same time, it may not be well. So it's good that one will keep silent for the other. But that silence must not be too much. Right there in the same period, you must break that silence. Do you understand what I mean? Look at the way you disgrace me in the midst of the public. I know that's your attitude. I know that's how you like to treat me. That's how you, you, you guys treat your wife and all that and all that. Don't say, shut up! Who treats you that? Even though 
You don't mean it. You don't know anything. He just comes like that. You keep quiet. Silent. But right at the same period, not the same time, maybe 20 minutes later, maybe 10 minutes later, depending on our estimation that she will not misinterpret your silence, then speak up. You say, dear, no, I don't do that. And if I do it, it's not intentional. Sorry. But you keep quiet, don't talk about it at all. Only jog money. What you are doing is people keep silent like that. They are recording it in their diary. Looking for the day they will fight back. Praise God. And don't let I'm sorry be too big for you. No matter what. I am sorry. Communication, silence is part of communication. Silence simply means you are saying nothing. But you are saying. But what you are saying is nothing. It's not audible. Hello? What you are saying is not audible. But you are saying something. It's either you are calling your spouse or snubbing him, or you are angry. In fact, there must be communication somewhere. With silence, there must be sure face, there must be gesticulation, there must be anything. So it is just the audibility that is absent. You are still communicating. Imagine if when the serpent came, it just kept quiet. Even though the enemy came with a question, Hear this. Your enemy know your weakness. And he will always come for you at your weak point and at your weak time. And most enemy come asking questions. In fact, some of them will come as if they are begging you to give them something. But you are their target. Hello, me, I want to go for a tour on Colon Way. Only the people for a Bayer Jenny. So be quick to know. Now, somebody wants to criticize the preaching you had today. You just say, Did you enjoy the ministration of daddy? And what he wanted to say, Nikwe. You see, where I mention a lady, it is me. But look at the way it started. So you have to be careful. Discuss with your spouse first, not church member first. Get home and rehearse the preaching. It's for two of you, not you and another member of the church. First of all. So always break your silence so as not in order to settle discord. And make sure you do that before sleeping each day. Don't sleep over dispute. Don't sleep over discord. Settle it before you go to bed. Smile to each other before you go to bed. Make sure the marriage life continues before you go to bed. Don't keep mute. Don't keep malice. And go to bed. Don't let angel hit you or demon oppress you. Hallelujah. How many of you know, among those who are married, that when you keep malice to go to bed, you have bad dreams? Anybody? Aha. 
That's God telling you. Settle all these people before you go to... Those of you who are not raising up your hand, and you always fight to go to bed. They are doing something. It's only your eyes does not see. You will discover that the second day, hatred increase. Isn't it? Ah, ah. They have done something. They didn't show you. It's not audiovisual. There's no heavenly television for you to see. But they have done what they have done. It got worse the following day. It goes into your subconscious. Praise God. Number next. Now, part of it, to settle quarrel, if you need third party, it's not a sin to have a third party in your marriage. It's not a sin. It's not a sin. Don't take wrong doctrine to your marriage. Don't vow to each other that no matter what happens, third person must not hear what is going on among the two of you. Satan will destroy that marriage. In fact, most of the marriages that lead to death of one of the couple are always like that. They have covenanted that no third party must be involved in their marriage. And the devil saw them when they are making that covenant. So he will go for the weak one among the two of them and go for the angry one to kill the weak one. Hallelujah. You think you are wise? That's not wisdom. Whoever is teaching you that is teaching you error. Hello? If God intends that there should be no body to set to quarrel between you and your spouse, he wouldn't have allowed a man to join you together before his altar. You will have joined the two of you together in your secret room. Why do you need a man? The father of the lady took a hand and gave it to the priest. And the priest took the hand of this and the hand of it and did what? When he was joining it, how many of them now? The man that is joining them is number one person they have access to. His wife is number two person. Where you must be careful is family members. And the reason is this. There is no father of either of you that will support the Huh? The spouse. Uh -huh. They will always have a flair for their... For their... So their, their, their mediation is with prejudice most of the time. Even when she's saying, Ba we dada. Ba me no more me. Beat my child for me. Not even in Nigeria of today. Where parents will come to school and say, where's the teacher that beat you? And he, she brought thug. And they called the teacher out. They said, we want to see you. Are you Mr. Ulutokwa? He said, yeah. Before he knows anything, bang, bang, bang. Because he discipline a child. But the priest that join you will not be biased. He will stand as the representative of heaven between the two of you. Don't deceive yourself and say nobody must hear. It is not every club that we watch that we just when he kill you, you will know that everybody will see. The man of God, T.D. Jakes, suddenly discovered one year that more than 30% of the marriage in his church have undergone divorce. 
And the devil wants to use that to spoil that man's ministry. And he went to God and started praying. And God said, from today, if anybody does not bring the issue of his marriage to you and your wife, don't ever be concerned with what happened to them. He said, ask them. Before they go to court to fight divorce, who, who always divorce the first day they have quarrel? Have you seen any couple that divorce as a result of first quarrel? Talk to me, church. It is when it, the incident continue and there is no mediator that it usually leads to battery, lead to divorce, lead to abuses, lead to so many other things. God does not intend that you keep quiet over wrong things in your marriage. If you do, you do it at your own expense. In leadership, I was teaching the leaders, and I said, who among you that are ordained into ministry, that they call you and your wife and ordain you at the same time? Nobody. They ordain the man, they ask the woman to support him. Or they ordain the woman and ask the man to support her. Isn't it? Isn't it? So every marriage will always have a leader. Now, when the leader cannot do his work properly, or the follower is not following right, there should be someone that will put your head together and set you issues. And it is wise for you to open up to the person who is going to bat you after you are dead. So that you won't die at all. You will be healed. I like to say this in churches. We have some people who are so biased against their pastors and against their church leaders that they don't want them to know what is going on in their home for one reason or the other, either for rebellion or pride or whatever, or they want to just camouflage so as to attract title or become a title holder in church. They will keep it from their pastor, and you will be hearing needs among members. They won't talk to their pastor, they will go and talk to Members who cannot help them. You go to the house of members. Look at where he beat me. Look at where he beat me. And the pastor is there. Some voluntarily don't tell the pastor because they feel proud. Some have been warned by their goat husband. If you tell that man, we won't go to that church again. What is he after? Of joy. And you too, if you love your life, cry out. That's what the Bible says. Don't let anybody kill you. I'm not saying this to ladies. Only I'm saying to men. Not some ladies beat some men. You have never heard. It's because you, you marry somebody that is your size. We have some men who love big, big ladies. And let them be in the force. It is even worse. All the karate, kung fu, defense, and everything. It is you they will use for practice.
Alléluia. But on a, on a serious note, except you are on my butter, I get butter to your monk. If you think on Tim Mobile, what do you put you call like Barato? A lolly queen. We thank God. On la chaîne, on a exercise. Tu as un homme, on a un homme, on a un homme. All right, that's a joke. Amen. Ali, if you don't know how to fight, you must know how to defend. Huh? You shield your face. Is this in me? You see? Ordinary Jedu, we eat, what is it called? This one in the room. Yes. And some people will go for antibiotics three weeks. Because they are secret. Spiritual leader, a man bossy. Ogoto Janu Lee, Tapeoka, Tapoqueoka. Correction to try Lati bring to your ball. Toba Shelly, I can. Especially we ministers. That's why I pity ministers who are not properly mentored. Many of them. Even with all their gifts, they lose their home. They don't have the confidence of their partner in whatever they are doing. Many of them, they have told the partner the truth, but he or she won't just follow. What are you waiting uh, you see, my, my, my boss in my place of work sent me to Lagos to go and buy a shirt. I mean, buy him shirt, buy him nice trousers, buy him, uh, and the other one said, there, how are you feeling towards your boss? Because this buy me singlet, buy me yet. Is it part of the official work? Tell him, how are you feeling? And don't say, I can't ask her. If she fall into adultery, that's her problem. That's her cup of tea. All that destiny is not rude. There is no place for pride in marriage. It is duty a lot more for you, but oh my, destiny it is not room at that program where you, the children you have given back to, will become children from broken home, and they will have the repercussion in their lives. So don't let any wayward spouse destroy your future. Correct it immediately. Praise the name of Jesus. Get concerned. Don't say go come me. Look at First King chapter two, first, I mean, chapter twenty-one. First King twenty-one. First King twenty-one. Verse. Verse. 
And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard. You know the story? Ah, uh, I'll go to verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him. Let's read from verse 4. Verse 4. And Ahab came to his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite has spoken to him. For he has said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and will eat no bread. Verse 5. But Jezebel, let's read together, is wild. May you have these characteristics of Jezebel. Pastor will be the first person now to say amen. Ma, amen. Because, you see, Bible is not by us. If you do good, you will write it. If you do bad, you will write it. If you ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you. But he will still write it. It is in the church that we only want our good to be pronounced and our bad to be silenced. In God's kingdom, God exposed the truth, but is still merciful on us. Jezebel is good in this area. Better than so many daughters of Zion. Hello. Where were the wives of David when Bathsheba was bathing and David was strolling on the veranda? I'm very sure if David had married Jezebel, wouldn't have committed that adultery. But that woman was so close, asking questions. I have sorrow. I'm a dark hair. You have a right to ask your spouse many times in a day. Some of us are so insensitive. I'm not talking about spouses that are uh, hypocrites or those that are mentally deranged or those who are always deceiving. I'm talking about sound spouse. Don't say that is how he is usually gentle. It could be ordinary food. Many times, the man or the woman may not even explain what is happening. His countenance just changed, he's weak. He's... It is your responsibility to find out what's going on. Some of you, you've been cooking food, the man has not been eating half of it for the past three days, and you never ask. It is the dog that concerns you. Daddy didn't finish it. Take it to dog. Daddy didn't finish it. Take it to dog. Until one day they call you and say, Okay, man, you know any, eh? 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 As somebody who has been drunk. When he didn't finish the food first time, second time. Ah. What's going on? Or do you need to be the one? And the same thing, your wife. Let's be sensitive. Let's be caring. And let us try as much as possible not to be hypocritical. Don't push your spouse to unnecessary spending, unnecessary uh, emotional trauma if it's not right.
Some of you, uh, uh, the husband say, I don't understand. And he eats, he cannot eat. And you sit down. Say, don't you pay me? Don't you pay me? Nibi, nibi introduction. Don't you pay me? Nibi introduction. And the man is looking at you. If you lose that man, everyone will ask for his blood in your hand. People will say, the battery for him, only right. In no real one look way. joke to Jack in no real law. We got to weakness, he partner, he irrelevant, Oh, my way. When the fishes are buffing in the water, they are fulfilling their God's assignment. When the birds are flying in the air, they are fulfilling their God's assignment. One day I asked the Lord, why do you give us power to kill chicken? Like ordinary ants. He said, each chicken you kill, my son. I was young. I hate killing things. And the Lord said, each time you kill a chicken to eat, to nourish your body, that chicken has fulfilled my God-given rule. When I saw it like that, I started killing chicken. One of your God-given rule is to cheer your partner. When she's sad and you are not there, it means you are useless. When she's happy and you are not there for her, it means you are useless. Hallelujah, somebody. Some women rejoice. That great man, that giant, is desiring you only. Ah. He's dead, you are now saying. Eh? Eme ole sheki man lo, man lo pati o. Sheki man lo pati. Eh ya dara, eh ya ni, eh dara, eh ya ni. Ah. Don't be useless. My mother didn't listen to this kind of message. But I discovered many times when she was on her way, parties and a sickly child suddenly get healed she will cancel the program and stay with her child she could be there for eight days that is why the child said that's the woman I have to take care in life and God has to say yes there are so many women that have lost those glorious children like that. Because those party party friends have told her, Hey Mereni, feel it! You are out of our love. I told you one. And when we prayed for him to wake up from death, he was doing like this. Because the parent was not ready. Who knows what that boy could have become in that family? God has to retrieve his spirit back. He will not become useless in the name of Jesus. Jezebel asks the husband, very observant, be observant. There are some men, some bujuga, not only so we can conscience let go be ah. Especially those men that went to boys only school. 
They, they, they don't learn how to open up to a woman. Many of them were trained that it is weakness. It's a sign of weakness before a woman to tell their wife that they are sick or anything. And until the thing becomes too obvious and irrepairable sometimes, they will know. What are you hiding? And why must he hide? Some men are too cumbered with the survivor of their home. And you are sleeping together on the same bed. And he touch you, the body is hot. You don't know. It is then you change your gear. <laughs> and you turn. As if Omi Big Bono no for what you were called Yiku men. Occurring me on his from that time. Yeah? What do you say? May we stand up? Can I make tea? We are parasamor here. Lay hand and pray. Say tomorrow, do you want us to go to clinic? No, that's good. Anti malaria. Thumb. Touch like this. Is eh? You know this, is not you. Just thumb. <laughs> and sleep continue. And in the morning, still expecting the woman to wake up and prepare food in full flask. Insensitivity. May God save us. Good communication. And you too. There's nothing bad in telling your spouse. I feel strong. Some of you, because you don't want to confess weakness, there's a way to tell your spouse what you are passing through without necessarily confessing negative. Want to ask me how? Huh? I feel not I am. I feel is different from I am. I cannot be sick. My body is feeling good. I just think I need tablet. You have communicated. I feel sick. I am not sick. And your wife, through communication, or your husband, will quickly know what you are saying. Because you are not strangers to each other. Praise the Lord. In this age of GSM, use phone or communication devices so lavishly with your spouse. Use phone so lavishly with your spouse. In case you are not at the same place. That's the reason you have palm tops. Use them lavishly. Don't fall victim or say, I don't have credit, I don't have credit. Praise God. Use phone lavishly. Your credit is not to watch a movie all the time. To enhance communication between you and your spouse. Firstly, that is much more important than all the browsing you want to do. Hear me. Even if you are before Mr. President, there is no rule of engagement that stops you from picking your wife's or your husband's phone. Yes.
Do you hear what I'm saying? What it will take from you is, Sir, Mr. President, this is coming from my spouse. My permitted to keep it. But to hop it, I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll call you. What if the case is an emergency? This guy alone, the wife has gone to work, and hardly as she traveled 10 minutes in her car, the phone began to ring. He's listening. After some time, Stop ringing. She couldn't pack. She looked at it and said, Honey, believing that when I get to office, I'll call him back. And the guy just came out from the bed. He didn't know that there was a sharp object that had been broken under the bed, which has now come out. He just placed his leg on it and blood on the vein, major vein, and blood wetted everywhere. When he was still active, the only person he could call was his wife. He was the only person in the house. And he kept calling. At the time he stopped calling, he has already fainted. Now you now get to office, you are now calling, you don't see any signal. What do you do? The next call they are going to have is that, hello, are you Mr. Badmore's wife? This is Aking's specialist hospital. Your husband needs your attention. Hey! I left it at home. <laughs> if your boss gives you an assignment, will you still sit down and do it? And that time, your phone, your email, your door switch here. Your spouse must not be taken for granted. According. Hear what he wants to say. Some of you, be totally we do. I call you. My lodger there, my lodger, my peer, pa. Oh, John, oh, neighbor, wanna. Customer, I want to watch me. Customer, I want to watch you. My peer, my peer, pa. Customer, I want to engage you. If I'm your boss, I hear that your spouse wants to talk and you just left him now. I don't know if I've told anybody to pick his call in my presence. Anybody? Yeah, I pick your call. Understand it. As important as your Spiritual father or leader is the leader. You see? There are calls you cannot ignore. Except you know that you are very sure it is not implicated. Use all lavishly. Don't reject the call of your spouse. At any time. And there are times wants to withdraw you. There are times he wants to show you something. There are times it is what you are dealing with that he wants to contribute something to. And it's not too much. You can ask him questions. Don't be too independent. And don't commonize your spouse.
Praise the Lord. Never fail to pick signs and cues. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10. Once things, the time of your courtship, you should learn some private cues. Learn private cues, signs that you couple will use. Don't be loud. Don't be noisome. The Bible frown at loud women in the book of Proverbs. Everybody must hear what you are discussing with your husband. It's a bad attitude. Everybody must hear what you are discussing with your wife. It's a bad attitude. You are a divorce. Daddy, you are. Only careful what so was cool, you Otherwise, you are not a Some of you do it because that's the way you are trained. Or well, you should get exposed. Two, some of you always want the third person. That's not good enough. Marriage institution is a sacred institution. Highly respected by God. Show respect to God. Some of you, if you buy anything for your wife, everybody must hear. Especially those of you who have drivers, who have gate men, who have housemaids. Keep issues between you and your spouse secret. It's not polite. No matter how close, no matter how innocent the person may be. That's why you must develop some cues, signs that you talk together and the third person around you don't know what you're saying. And show signs. You know when you are talking to your wife, you know when you don't have to shout. Be polite, be decent. Your home is too fragile to allow anybody into your privacy. Remember, you are not going to confuse what I say now with what I have said before. In terms of disagreement, hello, do we get the difference? Don't be talking. The two of you are talking, and you are calling the third person. Not necessary. The Bible says, let your yes be yes, and yet your no be no. God has not given you an ordained witness in such situation. It is when there is disagreement that your spiritual leader can come in. Or when there is joy. Or when there is miracle. Hear me. If you have good spiritual leader, he can enter your bedroom. As part of what I've discussed with you. Why you don't allow your mother-in-law into your kitchen? Your spiritual parent can do that. For a reason. So you must understand the differences. Amen. Amen. And every other person, when you are with a couple, take a reverse position. Except 
maybe they are your trainer and they deliberately want to train you in some things. And they are the one that will orchestrate it, not you. Over the years, I have had period when I draw pastors associate to us because I want them to see certain things. In fact, there was no time that somebody was not with us. But please be invited. Don't be an uninvited guest. When you are being mentored. Don't be loud about issues of your home. Your driver is in the car and one of your child repeated the course and you are scolding the child in the presence of the driver. You are already affecting your home. You don't know. Your prayer is that that driver will remain good. The day the devil takes that driver, your family is gone. All those rubbish you see online, that people publish online about men of God and all that, they are people who have looked nice in good time with those servants of God. But when the devil hijacked them, they go for those servants of God. In anger, begin to expose them and disregard them. The same thing, politicians. One driver of one time governor of a state like that was the one who exposed how his boss went to a fetish man in the bush and bath with blood. And they are looking for voters. But you see, when the man was carrying him about, and the man would give him 50, 100,000, 300,000, the driver would just keep quiet. No friend. But the day they fought, and he left the man. He destroyed his career. He is a friend to one popular fetish man. And he brought out the video of how he drove him to the bush to go and meet a fetish man. God did not say you should trust man. God said you should test men. Untested men will come after your destiny later, even after you have done what is good. Praise be to God. I've had people that lived in my house, took, took members of my church to his own house where they slept together and came as an usher when hooligans wanted to assault the church, it was the usher that stood by my side. And it was in his house, the planet. Don't you know that it is God that is keeping me alive? And this is a man that ate with me for more than three years. That I've related with for more than eight years. Don't be unwise. Untested people can do anything, anytime. Love everybody, but don't expose your life unnecessarily. Especially for men who have great interest, great substance, who are consequential, who are effective leaders. If God bless you, you have a gate man, you have a gardener, you have a, 
house gear and all that. Take good care of them, but don't sell out your privacy. You don't bribe anybody with your privacy. No matter how close. Don't bribe anybody with your privacy. Especially those who don't have relevance to your destiny. A lady will always ask for my counsel on every area. Ask for counsel. Ask for counsel. I was surprised the day he says, ah, I've, you have, I've always told you my life and you always cancel me. You, you are hiding your own life. I said, who is the counselor? Who is the counselee? I said, did I beg for information about your life? What are you talking about? You should understand. God gave me to you as a counselor, as a leader. Go to my secret to reform your life. I don't know what to do now. This is a life I only help eh? I'm in the room of counseling. I counsel you over what you brought. Okay, if you are not, please stop telling me about anything in your life. Did I beg for you? Such a person does not know the difference between the anointing and the ordinary. Somebody is not anointed and you are calling him into every matter of your life. May you not regret it. Hello? Hello? That is why in the school of mentoring, in the school of mentoring, if you are called a protocol officer of your mentor, the private time you have with him or with his wife is not for discussion. If you are to drive a guest minister to his place, it is not for you to start a discussion with him. In leadership, it leads to betrayal. And so many people are not schooled. Carry the wife of your pastor, you start a discussion with her. Because she too can talk. It's a shame. There are things you don't hear about your boss. The Yoruba people will say, Tabanso Rori Bibe Wajo Modi. Tobako Kori on Eluma. Yeah. If you are privileged to drive a very important VIP, keep quiet and face where you are going. If you need counseling, get the normal time of counseling. Don't play familiarity. That's not the time to... He or she can start a discussion with you, but not you starting a discussion with her. Eh, mommy motiferi. Eh, daddy motiferi. Mm -mm. That's not the best place to do it. Hello? Because the person will lose trust in you. Don't bastardize your access. Don't relate with anybody in a way that it will anger your partner. Know the feeling of your partner over the person you are communicating with. Even if your brother is living with you in your marriage, you don't have to expose everything that's going on between you and your spouse in front of her brother. You don't say brother. So fake man. Ecclesiastes 10:10. What does he say? Huh? If the axe be blunt, let's read it. 
If you don't wear the edge, you will put more strain. Everything needs to develop sickness because I want information to take belly lower. You don't have to be a fool. It is so bad. Some women will say, My husband, he cannot go more than one round. Some of them will say they are, they are, they are, they are looking for solution. I go to Ryan to lay help to say, Oh, by go more than one round. A lady is saying that to her driver. Careless ladies do it. He would think the man is a didiri. From that moment, that man is looking at her with sexual urge. From that moment, the man is looking at her husband as an invader, a, a stranger. Have you ever seen? Where your maid will love you and hate your husband. Or will love your husband and hate you. That's carelessness. You can't hate my wife and say you love me. That's not just possible. It's not possible. It's not. At this level, say, I just love Papa. I just love Papa. But the, but the wife, the mama, ah. Let me tell you, who cola? Don't make me eat money. I'm just in Bamo. I will let you know that I too don't like you. I care about our music. What else would you go to Jay? How many of you had him? Yeah, I'm not like it. When they call on you, my boss ain't like it. I'm not like it. For a quarter, I'm not like it. I'm not like it. I'm not like it. I'm not like it. Praise God. So you have to be very careful. Be very careful. And finally, for today, don't have anybody in your life that you enjoy communication with more than with your spouse. I remember one man was speaking in our community. Okay, and he said, I just like my wife. He's planning to travel out. I just like my wife. Uh, she won't feel my traveling out because she doesn't like sex. She won't, ah, I just like her. She, does, she doesn't enjoy sex. I don't know. She has already killed that woman. They meet among her friends. Among his friends. You know, there are friends who will say, My Jackie, I won't go. One most of all, Remy. Not a proper marriage. Don't have anybody you enjoy communication with better than. That we rise up. Have you learned something? Have you learned something? Whatever you learn, remember what you told God before we started this thing. 
You are going to correct what is wrong. You are going to rebuild what is broken. You are going to ask for pardon for the error you have committed. You are going to take grace to flow in the right direction. And the young people, you are going to do it right. Let's close our eyes to pray. At this time, I don't want you to deceive yourself. Go before God and set to areas where you know God expects you to set to. Some of you, you have to make a vow and say, Lord, from today, a commitment. This will never happen again, my home. Good communication in marriage. Ignorance is not an excuse from penalties of law. Some of us have been suffering because of ignorance. But now we know. Let God have mercy. Those of you who are yet to marry, pray that God will instill this wisdom in your heart. Be truthful. Be patient. Be patient. Let God expose the one you want to marry. Know him or her intimately. Take time. Don't lie to each other. Be yourself. And let God guide you. Malibu Sokabayandari. Father, we thank you for today. Libro kabozo kabayanda, lemro baso kabayandiri kapo. Communication, good communication, good communication, good communication. Make my home like the throne of heaven. Make my marriage like a public building full of glory and honor. Teach me. Help me to stand in wisdom. Let me love my partner as you love me. As you love the church. Jesus help me. Wherever my marriage is sick, heal me. Help my spouse. Let there be no tragedy in my marriage. From beginning until we fulfill divine purpose. Keep us as the apple of your eye. Let our wine be refreshed every time. Help us to carry our children to safe places in life and destiny. Lord, use us as patriarch for many. Good patriarch, points of references to many. That your name may be glorified. Pray for runaway partner. That God will enter their heart. Take danger from their life and restore them. Let every broken home be mended. Let instrument of fighting be destroyed from homes. Grant humility and mutual understanding to homes. Everyone that surrounds our home, give them divine understanding. 
Let them allow us be, and let us allow them be. Make my marriage effective in my family, effective in the church, effective privately and publicly to the praise and the glory of your name. Don't let me limit my spouse in any way, spiritual, physical, psychological, intellectual, socially. Don't let her limit me. Separate my marriage from evil intruders. Separate strangers from my marriage. Separate polluters from my marriage. Separate wicked people from my marriage. Save us from wrong relationship. Grant understanding to those that surround my home. In the name of Jesus, purify my matrimonial home. Make it pure again as at the beginning. Young people, pray for yourself. I won't make mistakes. I will not practice deception. I shall not be hypocritical. Falsehood will not be found in my life. I will not be afraid to build my home on a solid foundation. Lord, you will help me. I will not end up in polygamy. Any one of you that your parent is practicing polygamous family structure, pray right now that that demon will not succeed on you. Malebo Shinda, any product of broken home here, pray that it will not repeat itself in your own life. Kaboye Deria, anybody that lost father or mother when you are young, pray that your children will not lose you. Pray that you will not die young with your spouse. Lord, my wife shall be like a fruitful garden all around my house. She shall be called blessed, a virtuous woman. She will not deteriorate. The enemy will not get us down. Anyone that is dangerous for my marriage for the future, I separate by fire by force. Enemy will not know the secret of my home. In the name of Jesus, any secret agent of Satan in my, concerning my home, I withdraw it and I destroy it in the dustbin of life. In the name of Jesus. Husband, where are you failing? Pray for help of God. Wife, where are you failing? Pray for help of God. Labo shakaya nuria. Lebro koborika sakaya. My father, my God, thank you for today. Pray that you strengthen me. I simply just.